हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई रोहित शाह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन श्यामलाल कॉलेज कम्स बैक विद द थर्ड लेक्चर इन मैथमेटिक्स ऑफ फाइनेंस द टॉपिक दैट वी आर कंसिडरिंग टुडे इज नॉमिनल एंड इफेक्टिव रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ना व्हाट इज द नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट नॉमिनल रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज द फेस फेस रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट वट डज दिस मीन this means that if it is specified that uh, mr x borrows rupees 10000 at the rate of 12% per annum compounded quarterly for 3 years so in this case this 12% per annum is the face rate of interest or the nominal rate of interest then the question comes what is effective rate of interest effective rate of interest is the actual rate of interest or is the actual rate that customer ends up paying for instance in this case the effective rate of interest will be computed by 1 plus i to the power m minus 1 which makes it to 1 plus what is i i is r divided by m so here r is 0.12 and it is compounded quarterly so m is 4 so this becomes 0.03 hence here it becomes 1 plus 0.03 to the power m m is 4 minus 1 which makes it to 1.1255 minus 1 which is 0.1255 or 12.55% so which means that in reality mr x ends up paying 12.55% rate of interest per annum so this is termed as effective rate of interest effective rate of interest is the actual rate of interest that the borrower ends up paying so now the question arises that can the nominal and effective rate of interest be same yes it can be if compounding is done per annum but if compounding is done semi annually or quarterly or monthly or continuously then in that case the effective rate of interest will be quite higher than the nominal rate of interest and the reason behind it is force of interest that we will be doing now now what is force of interest force of interest is the difference between the effective rate of interest and the nominal rate of interest so we can say that R e minus R is equals to force of interest. So in the previous case, the force of interest was twelve point five five percent, which was the effective rate, minus twelve percent, which makes it to zero point five five percent as the force of interest. which simply means that since we are compounding interest more than once in a year in since we are com since we are compounding interest more than once in a year the borrower ends up paying higher interest than the nominal rate which is termed as effective rate of interest there are two formulas for computing the effective rate of interest num first is when interest is compounded m times a year so in this case the effective rate of interest is 1 plus i to the power m minus 1 but the second case when interest 
is compounded infinity times a year which means compounded continuously in this case the effective rate of interest is e to the power r minus 1 So let's try to understand this concept by an example. So Mr. Hex has two investment option. Either he can invest at the rate of 10% per annum compounded semi-annually or he can invest at the rate of 9.5% per annum compounded continuously. Now which option is preferable and why? So for this we need to compute the effective rate of interest in both the investments. So let compute for option 1 first. in option 1 the effective rate of interest is 1 plus i to the power m minus 1 where m is equals to 2 since it is being compounded semi annually r is equals to 0.10 or 10% therefore i is equals to r divided by m which is equals to 0.10 divided by 2 which makes it to 0.05 therefore effective rate of interest is 1 plus 0.05 to the power m which is 2 minus 1 which is 1.05 to the whole square minus 1 which makes it to 1.1025 minus 1 that is 0.1025 or we can rewrite it as 10.25% so the first inv investment option will give mr x an effective rate of return of 10.25% similarly we will compute for second option so in the second option that is option number 2 what is given to us the rate of interest is given to us that is 9.5% and the interest is being compounded continuously so if interest is compounded continuously the effective rate of return becomes e to the power r minus 1 that is e to the power 0.095 minus 1 now we again look into the exponential table and find the value of e to the power 0.095 which is 1.097 Minus one, which makes it to zero point zero nine seven seven, or we can rewrite it as nine point seven seven percent. So, the first option was giving us a return of ten point two five percent, whereas the second investment is giving us an return of nine point seven seven percent. So, an optimal investor or a rational investor will choose option 1 and invest in the first investment so mr x will be investing in the first investment that is at the rate of 10% per annum compounded semi annually now we will do one more question on this topic and then move ahead so let's understand this question the question says that mr x took a loan from a money lender of rupees 20000 for 6 months and lender charges interest of rupees 2000 while lending if you try to understand the money lending concept in the traditional india or in the villages what used to happen is the lender subtracts interest at the time of lending which results in reduction in the principal amount so in the in this particular case the principal amount is not rupees 20000 but 20000 minus 2000 which is 18000 the reason behind it is mr x is not getting the entire money while he takes the loan what he receives is rupees 18000 that is 20000 minus 2000 so the principal amount is rupees 18000 and what is the interest interest for 6 month is rupees 2000 what is the time period time period is 6 months 
and what is the rate of interest here it is denoted by i because we know the interest for six months and not not for entire year if you would have been knowing the interest for entire year then we would have computed r here but since we don't know the interest for the entire year we will compute i that is interest for six month so this becomes 2000 divided by 20 uh, divided by 18000 because the formula for interest is interest rate is interest divided by principal amount which makes it to 1 by 9 and since interest is being charged after 6 months which means that interest is being compounded half yearly therefore our m is equals to 2 so in this case if we had to compute the effective rate of interest the effective rate of interest would have been re is equals to 1 plus i to the power m minus 1 that is equals to 1 plus i which is 1 divided by 9 1 by 9 to the power m which is 2 minus 1 which makes it to 10 by 9 to the whole square minus 1 which makes it to 1.23456 minus 1 resulting in 0.23456 or we can rewrite it as 23.456 percentage hence the effective rate of interest in this case is 23.456 percentage